Hello friends, it's Jim O'Rear. Today we are in Daytona Beach, Florida. It's a, uh, it's a beautiful place with lots of biker gangs and prostitution and uh, things like that the police tell us. <laughs> but I know it as a home and stomping grounds for lots of serial killers like Oba Chandler and Eileen Warnow is the first uh, female serial killer and uh, 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 Gerald Stanos. And who we're gonna focus on today though is a, a pretty recent one. He was known as the Daytona Beach Killer. Robert Hayes. And uh, we're going to walk in Robert Hayes' footsteps. We're going to go see some of the places where his victims were found, some places where he hung out, give you a look at his life, and uh, what those places look like now. So come on along with us and walk in a killer's footsteps. Robert Tyrone Hayes was born on March 12, 1982 in West Palm Beach, Florida, the youngest of four children. Growing up, Hayes was raised primarily by his mother as his father had been murdered shortly after his birth, and according to later reports, he has received an uncertain amount of abuse as a child. When he was young, he was molested by a family member of a similar age. He was described as chubby in his adolescence, resulting in Hayes often being bullied. Nicknamed Squeaky by friends and family, Hayes was described as someone who was always there for people, friendly with neighbors, outspoken, and recited poetry. He was known by friends to have an active sex life, attending sex parties, suspected of inviting prostitutes over, and at one point he invited a family member to have a sex party. He was also described as someone with a good sense of humor and a fun, positive attitude. Between the years 2000 and 2006, Hayes went to school here at Bethune-Cookman University where he was studying criminal justice. He was known to be helpful to friends and acquaintances. Friends also explained Hayes had an interest in cooking and attempted to start his own cooking business in Charlotte, North Carolina. The first of his victims was Laquita Mae Gunther, who was found wedged between these two buildings behind me. She was partially clothed and lying in a fetal position. She was known to have worked as a prostitute. DNA was recovered from the body, which later proved to be a match with Hayes. Hayes' second victim was 34-year-old Julie Green, whose body was found here while this subdivision was still being built. It's a nice place now. You'd never expect to find a body. She also worked as a prostitute. She had also been shot in the back of the head. No DNA was recovered, but tire tracks were found. The tires were for a 2003 Taurus or Sable, and in fact, the exact tires were later found. Just over a month later, police found the body of Awana Patton, 35 on a dirt road. She had been shot, but not in the back of the head, and possibly had struggled with her killer. DNA was recovered, along with a shell casing that allowed police to identify the make and model of pistol used. Ballistics from recovered bullets and recovered DNA matched. Police believe the victims voluntarily accompanied their killer, possibly in a vehicle, and were subsequently murdered and dumped in the same area of Daytona Beach. The killer did not attempt to conceal the bodies. It was believed the victims were the result of the killer letting out their frustration on them. The remains of Stacy Gage, age 30, were found here at the end of Hancock Boulevard. She had been shot in the head. She was killed when she left her house, which she shared with her grandmother, to buy a bag of ice. Police have further stated that the circumstances surrounding the case are eerily similar to the three previously unsolved homicides. Unlike the first three victims, though, Gage did not have a criminal record involving prostitution. However, she did have a history of drug problems. 
The van Gage was driving the night she disappeared was later recovered in the parking lot of an apartment complex. The Daytona Beach PD created a task force to find the killer, who was labeled as the Daytona Beach Killer. Numerous suspects were interviewed, including Hayes, because he had bought a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson weeks before the first murder. However, he was not thought to have been involved. On March 7, 2016, the naked body of 32-year-old Rachel Elizabeth Bay was found dead alongside a highway near Jupiter, Florida. An autopsy was performed on her body, which showed she had been strangled and badly beaten and other evidence showed that Bay had fought her attacker. DNA evidence of the perpetrator was found during the investigation. Detectives were notified that the DNA found on Bay's body had matched to DNA samples taken from the original Daytona killings. DNA collected from Daytona Beach killer victims was run through a genetic database used by people trying to find long-lost relatives, and a link to Hayes was established. Hayes was put under surveillance, and police collected a used cigarette butt that linked him to the killings. On September 15, 2019, Palm Beach County officials arrested Hayes, 37, at his West Palm Beach home for the killing of Rachel Bay. He was charged with one count of first-degree murder and was ordered to be held without bail. DNA found on Bay matched DNA recovered from Gunther and Green, and ballistics tests connected Hayes to the killing of Patton. Hayes was then charged with three additional counts of first-degree murder. On February 22, 2022, Hayes was found guilty and sentenced to three life sentences without parole. So, I hope that gives you a little glimpse into the life of the Daytona Beach serial killer Robert Hayes and uh, a look at what some of his stomping grounds looks like now. If you've liked this video, look for more because we're doing more serial killers in Daytona videos and uh, some interesting stuff. So, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up to let the powers that be know that you like the video and while you're at it click on follow or subscribe and you'll be notified when I upload new videos. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.